Hello and welcome to today's YouTube episode. On today's sewing adventure, I'm going to be showing you how I make a twirl for this dress. It is the Roberts Wood Bow Patchwork Dress with shoulder ties. So let's get started. So just a little bit about what I'm wearing today. Today I am wearing my Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper and this is the one I talked about in one of my previous blogs. It is a scrap busting version so you can see I've gone for some quite fun colours and these were all scraps in my stash so it's the one super comfy, it's super warm, it's lovely for doing some proper sewing which is what we're about to get into in a minute. So this pattern is probably the most complex pattern that I have ever made. This is the picture and as you can see it is just a dress made up of all of these patchwork pieces. So the way that they have organised them is they've done them in rows. So row one, row two, row three, row four, da 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 da. So what I've got here is I've got the pieces for row one cut out and this is pieces one a to 1H and then I've got row 2, row 3 and all I've done is I've just cut them out and stuck a little pin in them. So I have talked about this as a sewing plan in one of my previous vlogs and what I said was when you buy the pattern you have to just buy one size. So I was a size 8 bust but I was actually a size 12 waist and hips. So that means that I have to grade the pattern out. Now, as you can see, there are all of these patchwork lines here. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to add extra seam allowance into these uh, seams so that I can get the correct fit for my dress. So what I'm gonna do, I, I figure rows A, B, I'll leave the same. And then when I get to row C, I might have to start giving extra seam allowance into these pieces. When I get to row D, E and F, I will definitely have to add extra seam allowance because I think I need to add up to six, I think it's five or six centimeters I need to add around the waist. So I'll have to see how that goes. Now, to make this twirl, I do have a sheet. So this is my lovely sheet that I'm gonna be making the twirl out of. So I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of that process. But the final dress, and I did talk about this in my plan the other day, I want to make with these off cuts, because obviously you can see the pieces are actually quite small. These off cuts of these gorgeous embroidered fabrics that I made my Agnes um, pajama top with. So I'm gonna be using them. And I do have some more embroidered tablecloths that I'm gonna to add to them. And then I thought that for the contrasting pieces, because it is made up of different types of fabric or different colors of fabric, I actually thought I could use some fabric dye to change the color of some of the plain pieces of linen so that I'm not just restricted to using the pieces with embroidery. I can dye them a different color and then use them as part of the patchwork bow pattern as well. So that's kind of all in the plan, but that is not until I've figured out this twirl and seen if it actually fits. So the first place I'm gonna start with this pattern is row A, it is the row across the top. It should fit nicely. Um, row A has pieces one to H, and what's really good about these little pieces is it says, so piece 1A, for example, this is it, it's tiny. It says row A, cut one pair, and it says center back. So that is the, this, the um, zip will be running down this back seam here. So that's quite interesting. And then we've got pieces, piece H. <laughs> this is piece, piece H, and that will be the center front piece. So from the back around to the front, we've got H. So we've got eight pieces, and then this is, with this piece included, we've got seven more pieces going around that way as well. So that is quite an interesting construction. So I'm hoping to complete row one, and then obviously I'll complete row two, three, four, five, and I think I need to get down to six and seven to see how the waist will fit. 
So my aim is to complete all of these different rows, get them together. Obviously, as I said, by the time I'm at row three, four, five, and six, I will have to add quite a considerable amount to that seam allowance to get the fit across my waist correct. So I'm gonna start with rows one and two and see how I go with them. I'll let you know how I get along on the way. And yeah, I'm just gonna see how it goes. I really hope the tile works because I, I can, I've got, you know when you have an image in your head, I've got an image in my head of what I want this dress to look like in the end, and I just really hope it works out. And I'd love to bring you along the journey and the adventure with me as well. So these are my pattern pieces. You can see there's loads and loads and loads of them that are falling on the floor even. And I was thinking, oh, that's good. By the time I get to row eight, uh, I've only got two pieces, that's great, I've only got these two pieces, but it actually says cut eight. So there's actually 16 pieces going around the base of all of them. So yeah, you can see it's quite interesting. It's a really interesting construction and I'm really excited to be making this dress. Okay, so here is row one and row two and you can see that row one is actually split into three different pieces to make room for the armhole which is here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach row one to row two and see how I get on. Now this is a twirl. There are mistakes. I'm actually really pleased I'm making a twirl first because it is a little bit more tricky than I thought and I think it would be really good to get practice in with these curved seams before I actually use the real fabric and make the actual dress. So I'm going to attach these two now and let you know how I get on. Okay, now I have attached row two to row one and you can see that there's the shaping for the armhole there. This does actually have a facing attached, so I'm not going to attach the facing for the twirl. I'm going to put some fake kind of straps on just so that I can tie it on. But on the whole, I'm quite pleased with how that's gone. It is not a hundred, some parts are really good. It's not 100% perfect, but this is a twirl, and the more that I do, the more rows that I do, the more practice I get, the more likely that my final version will be better than this. So really happy with how it's going so far. That's row one and row two. I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna attach row three, and I'll let you know how I get on with that, because I might need to start adding some of that extra seam allowance at this point. Okay, so I've made it to here. This is with rows one, two, and three, obviously, you can see. I'll come in a little bit closer so you can see. I have tried it on inside out, and I have actually pinned. There's a slight bit of excess that I want to take away from the bust, and I think that that will make the fit a lot better. I'll show you it inside out in a minute. Um, what I have done, though, is I have let the seam allowance out. And every time I've done it, I've put minus one on each side, and that's just minus one millimeter. And that's just a little reminder to myself. I haven't done it on all of them. That's just a little reminder to myself that I have done that. So that has given me that extra room that I need in the waist. Now, with the next bit, piece row four, I have actually sewn row four, and you can see at the top it says minus one, and then at the bottom it says minus two. So that is the amount of millimeters I'm taking off each one. And then here I've written myself a note saying minus two equals edge of foot. So that is how I'm bringing that seam allowance in there. So this is the next, um, where's the middle? There's the middle. Oh, I haven't quite finished it yet. I've, uh, I don't know where the middle is. Might even be here, but that is the next layer um, of, the top. So I'm hoping that when I sew these together in particular that they match up the patchwork lines. Yeah, so that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm doing well and hopefully next time I try it on I'll be able to show it with row four as well. So this is the inside out try on and you can see, I'll hold it at the back there, it's a bit difficult to pin, but you can see that I've just taken like a couple of millimeters out of each of this seam of the bust and that actually really really improves the fit it's a little bit baggy if i don't do that so yeah i'm gonna sew row four on and then let you know how i'm going 
Okay, so this is it. This is the finished twelve, and I'm super pleased with it. I've brought it down to rows one, two, three, four. This is the fifth row, so the bodice part is actually only four rows, which is good. I'm super pleased with the fit across the waist. Remember, I've got my minus um, ones and twos and threes like and things like that to remind me how many millimeters I need to take. Uh, I need to give to the seam allowance rather to give me this um, width around the waist. I've also got these pins coming in at the bust and I don't know if you can see but I've actually drawn red pin down there as well to show me how much I need to take in there. I'll do that after this. I thought I might even film myself showing the process of that of one of the sides. Um, You'll have to excuse me for the zip. It's not very straight, but obviously this is a twelve. I just want to get it on. I just want to see what it looks like. And when I come to making the actual dress, I'll make sure that the zip is inserted much more neatly than that. <laughs> so really pleased with it so far. I think it's fitting really, really nicely. I think once the fullness of the skirt is added, it, it and I can even, I think there's even a bit of room to take out of the straps here but once it's all kind of fully done I feel like it'll actually be a really nice fit so I'm going to take in these bust darts these um, seams now I'll show you how I do that and then hopefully after that we'll have the final try on and the trial will be complete okay so this is the lift bust seam that I'm going to be taking in that we talked about just before I've taken the pins out and it's a bit of a curly whirly one but I think it will work I've drawn with red pen where the where I want to take the seams in from what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unpick the vertical and the horizontal seams um, so I'm going to get on with that now and then I'm going to show you my plan of attack after that so first job unpick vertical unpick horizontal and then think about reconstructing Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but what I've done is I've unpicked that whole section, vertical and horizontal seam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it in the right way. I'm going to match the red lines from each side. Remember how I drew on the red lines from where I would pinned it. So I'm going to match them up and then I'm going to sew the vertical seams and then I'm going to sew it across horizontally. So I've I've only got three to do. I've got one, two, three horizontal seams to take in, and then I'll go along, sorry, three vertical seams to take in, and then I'll do the horizontal ones later. Okay, so here is one side is completed, the other side still pinned. I feel like that fit, I know it's not the neatest, but I feel like that fit across that bust now it's actually really really good it's a little bit sticky outy but I think that's just because it's got that excess seam allowance and I haven't pressed it so remember it's going to have the weight of the rest of the skirt in it the linen is a slightly thicker fabric with a bit more structure so I'm hoping that that will kind of make it fit like a little bit differently as well um, uh, and kind of hang differently. I don't want to be adjusting the vertical lines because I did think I could take a bit out of here but I don't think I want to be adjusting those vertical lines because I think they're supposed to sit straight so I mean yeah overall I mean I could take a teeny tiny bit more from there but Again, I do have to wear it, I do have to live in it. I don't want it to be super duper tight because then, you know, I, I can't really move around. So it is a summer dress, it is supposed to be comfortable and on the whole, I'm really pleased with that fit across the bust. I'm gonna do the other one, the other side, and then I'll let you know how I get on. Okay, so I have now made all of those adjustments to the toile. I'm really pleased with the fit. I will do a slow twirl for you, so you can see all the way around. Please ignore the zip. <laughs> um, I will try harder when I put in the zip uh, the, on the real dress. Um, but that is it. So I feel happy enough with that. As I said, I do have to live in it. I have to move around in it. I have to walk places and I have to wear it. So I don't want it to be too, too tight. I was thinking that I could possibly take a little bit more from here, but... 
I need to be able to like eat and move and walk. So I feel like this is a really good fit. It's actually worked. I wasn't sure it was gonna work. I had an idea in my head, so I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And I will be able to transfer all of these markings. Remember, I've taken quite in-depth notes with this one. So I'll be able to transfer all of these markings onto the actual pattern pieces. And I will also feel more confident if I do have to adjust the actual pattern pieces, which I shouldn't have to too much, I will feel quite confident that I will be able to do that. So, super pleased, super happy, and I can't wait to make the real thing now. So that is it for today's YouTube episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite an involved one and there was quite a lot of fitting, but I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of me making the toile for this dress. Now, I'm super impressed with how the toile has turned out. As we know, it's quite rough in places, but it will work. And I'm just really reassured that the adjustments that I have made do fit and I have written them all down. Remember, I've got this very detailed system. I've written all over my toile and I might write a little bit more once I finish this clip just to really remind me of how I'm going to make up the final dress in the final fabric. So thank you again for watching. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you so much. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you could do so. And also if you could like this clip, it would be much appreciated as well. I hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you, and I will see you here again soon.